My name is Xavier uh, Rubio, and I'm a lecturer at the University of Edinburgh, but I am also the director of Matrix Game, which is a game studio, a small game studio is, uh, that creates educational games. Okay, I'll talk about what educational means uh, right now, but I'm presenting uh, or research of what we are doing in terms of how we <coughs> use video games and especially game design to, uh, to explain archaeology to the main audience. Um, so if you take a look at archaeology in video games, usually what you have is a copy of the stereotype that you see in other media, such as I mean, the classic one in the Jones, but then you have your own uh, archaeologists in video games, uh, like Tomb Raider or, or the Uncharted franchise. They are really big franchises that they, I mean, they are super famous in video games, but all of them essentially use the same tropes uh, about archaeology and archaeologists. Uh, so that's more or less the vision that you get from, of archaeology in uh, mainstream video games. The problem is that uh, obviously you say, okay, this is, uh, let's say, entertainment game. So what about when you try to make a game to explain something? Uh, so when you create uh, what's called entertainment, so education in video games. The problem is that if your goal is education instead of having an interesting game, an engaging game, the, uh, let's say the perspective of the public of these games is not great. Okay? They, uh, people think that these games are boring because usually they are. Yes. Especially compared to, uh, let's say, uh, what you can play. I mean, if you have if you have uh, this uh, defined number of hours and you want to spend a game, you want the game to be entertaining. If it's not, you, move, you will move to a different game. Um, that's quite interesting because even in the case of big uh, games such as Assassin's Creed, so you have 200 million dollars of budget. And they created an educational tool from this game. What they essentially did is they removed all the fun parts of the game, and then they created a guided visit to Egypt. So it's like, okay, with 200 million dollars, that's the only thing that you can come uh, in terms of education. Uh, so seriously, you don't have more ideas than that in, in terms of uh, time to say something in an interesting way. Um, so what we think is that if you take a look at what video games can offer, some of these things can be really useful for uh, education. Mainly they are problem solving. Uh, it's a problem solving mechanism that you can play and with some interesting story. That, so the idea is that you have to learn something in order to solve these this puzzles, okay? So that's generally the definition of a game set. So the question is if you can use this design element of learning and uh, problem solving to, to teach something about that. The case study we are working right now is called Ancestors. This is a game um, that tries to explain the story of this uh, one of the most important sites in Paleolithic in Europe, uh, Atacuerca. And the idea is to explain human evolution, but also findings of these species, and try to break some stereotypes about games, sorry, about um, archaeology, like, such as, for example, that these, um, these species were not really smart, or that uh, gender specialization was already something if you take a look at Neanderthal. These kind of things that you can see in other, in other video games. So um, what we did is, it's a small project, as you can see here, but I will explain the decisions we took in four different areas uh, related to game design. Okay? Uh, the film is a theme, so it's a unifying concept of the game. Everything really is about this theme. And in our case, we chose transcendence. So it's like, yes, you have a different species. You have a million years of chronology, but there is a theme of that there's something more important and uh, stable than the different individuals, which is the concept of uh, hominids or humans, if you want, or human evolution. Okay. So everything. Uh, this is the main menu. So the main menu with this sky, with the star, is kind of relating to this sense of transcendence because all the hominids, despite of what the sky that was, they were seeing, they were seeing stars. So it's something that links all the different the different species. Uh, then you have uh, lore. Lore in games is the knowledge that you transmit to the player through different mechanisms uh, called expositions. So what we did here is, yes, you have an encyclopedia, but you can take a look at it. But the important thing is that the game mechanics have all this lore included. So if you don't know what's a chopper, uh, the best way of learning uh, what it is is to make one and then use it to some specific actions. So in this way, you learn the, the, what is exactly this tool and why is it useful and why they use it. The third one is storyline. And that's quite a tricky one if you talk about a million years of story, because there's no story that can be that long. So what we did is we took a different approach. The idea here is that we take some a kind of sapiens. This is a graphic from Atapuerca, from the Bronze Age. 
And the idea here is that this group of sapiens is explaining stories about their past, about the legends of their ancestors. And that's the skills that we use to add or to introduce stories of the different communities. Okay? So some of these species are about Neanderthals, some of them are about antecessors. And the idea here is that you have a link between all the different species, that is this group of sapiens, and uh, for this reason you are also relating the player to the, to the species that is actually telling the stories. Um, so this is the idea, you start with the introduction and then you go to the, uh, to the uh, species and you start playing with the different species, such as in this case, the antecessors. Um, finally, you have the mechanics, and in here, what we have is very specific goals, such as unlock a mountain, come a path that you can go there and do some stuff. And the different actions uh, to solve this puzzle, to achieve this goal, are actions that are related to hunter-gatherer life, uh, and this is what we know about uh, what they did. So that's more or less the idea. Here you have, for example, things like, in all games, hunters are made, okay? It, it, it's quite independent of the species, that's what everybody is doing. So we simply, we simply change that, and then what we do is, uh, the different actions for ancestors and the undertaft, we, uh, uh, well, if in one uh, group, the, let's say that the hunter is made, and the other one will be made and the other way around. In this way, we are, even if we are not telling it, we are showing that the different actions were made by the two uh, challenges. Um, also, we are children, we are all, uh, elder people. These are things that you usually cannot see in uh, mainstream video games. Um, here you have the events. That's another thing that uh, these are random events that happen, and you have to choose which one of the two will happen. That's also a mechanism to add uh, events and knowledge of these times, such as, for example, climate change, environmental change, relations with other plants. So all of these things are condensed in this in this uh, format. We don't have a <coughs> budget, so the idea here is that we are playing with the imagination of the player uh, to add, let's say, the gaps that we cannot really play with graphics or with uh, mechanics. And finally, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, Lorenz exposition, another thing that is really important is what's called environmental narrative meaning that there are lots of things that you don't need to explain if you show it, okay? So here we are in a lot of findings from uh, what we know, like for example, the animals that they had, all the animals of the game are based on what they have found, that they hunted, the different tools, the materials of the tools, or even the fact that they uh, tattooed their bodies. So you don't need to explain that. If you show that the Neanderthals have the body tattooed, uh, the player will, will already see it. To conclude, uh, the idea here is that we believe that there is a gap between this uh, pure entertainment and pure education uh, approaches to games that we can actually exploit. But the most important thing is that the games need to be fun. If they are not fun, uh, let's say that they will realize that we change the game. Okay, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>